good afternoon to everybody. Um, we will stay for a small time more in Iraq, especially this time in Iraqi Kurdistan. And um, my paper will a little bit overlap with the previous one, but in a way of the <laughs> usage years, <laughs> uh, of the usage of the hexagon satellite imagery for our purposes of, um, of the mission we are right now dealing with. Um, so let me briefly introduce to you a topic um, which is still a little bit on the periphery of interest in the terms of remote sensing usage in archaeology, and that is the archaeology of modernity. In this case, in the area of Middle East, um, uh, mainly in the Kurdistan area of northern Iraq. Uh, the use of satellite data collection in this area, as was shown in a previous paper, uh, has a long tradition in ancient and especially medieval archaeology, or especially ancient and medieval archaeology, but their use for the documentation and detection of historical heritage belonging to the modern period is uh, minimally reflected. The wars, the military campaigns, and uh, hostile policies of certain regimes have dominated the history of Iraqi Kurdistan in the 20th and 21st centuries, and they have really significant influenced the subsequent course of the culture. Uh, the influence of these so-called dark modernities is ever-present in today's urban and rural landscape and needs to be explored before the evidence disappeared completely. Since the last year, um, we have been working on an archaeological project which uh, is hidden under the big project of uh, landscape archaeology starting uh, since 2022 and this is a how to say private project uh, covered by this one it's my project on the topic dealing with the modern history of northern Iraq and uh, to reflect the uh, development of the landscape uh, rural settlement in a specific uh, area. The crucial historical period that represents the main turning point in this topic is the period of the 1970s and 1980s. Um, the Ba'athist processes or the Arabization processes, especially the so-called Al-Anfal campaign, represents the worst period of Saddam Hussein's Arabization processes and leads to the genocide of Kurdish population, their violent uh, resettlement and very dynamic changes in the rural landscape of Kurdistan. Especially due to the fact hundreds of villages were completely abandoned and destroyed by the Iraqi army. The settlement pattern of the towns and villages affected by the forced resettlement of the original population is very often linked to the earlier periods. We have proved the continuation of the settlement pattern since the Middle Ages. Um, there were the villages settled for thousands or hundreds of years. And one period, one short period in the 1970s and 80s cut this long-term tradition of settlement. One of the objectives of our research project is to develop a methodology for documentation of the fragile heritage that is still visible and well preserved um, in the landscape, based mainly on the remote sensing datasets. However, the future preservation of such monuments is fragile in a landscape that is undergoing rapid and massive transformation, especially in an ever-expanding built-up area. The historical satellite and aerial photography with the proper field documentation may therefore often be the only witness to the visual record of the historical and the current state of this type of historical heritage. Our region is located in the northern part of Iraqi Kurdistan um, in the governorate of Erbil, 20 to 50 kilometers northeast from the district capital of Koya. The area can be characterized as a mountainous landscape with altitudes between 600 to 1,300 meters. It's a region of three sub-districts, Degala, Siktan, and Svakuli. The region is relatively remote and um, not very densely populated, uh, but it has been subject to totally minimum, quite non-historical or archaeological mapping activity in the past. 
the period of the modern settlement in this area has been subject to or um, was completely unexplored. Approximately 150 villages that were totally or partially destroyed as a result of the Anfal genocide, so-called Operation 5, 6 and 7, between the 15 May and 26 August 1988, are located in this particular mountainous landscape. 68 of the original count of 150 villages, they are located straight in our area of our interest and their well the uh, base uh, data source for our next research. The project uses historical and current uh, satellite imagery at its primary data source. The main data source in this case um, represents three hexagon missions. These missions were chosen to reflect the period prior to the genocide operation and also to cover the period of the 1970s when the first forced population movement during the year, especially 1974-75, and the process of violent rural settlement took place in this area of Kurdistan. So there are two main um, years or um, eras uh, for us, the 70s, the year 1974 and the year 1988, that means the Anfar period. The images were used coming from um, the year 1972, 1975, 1982, and the current appearance of the villages was assessed during freely available satellite imagery mosaics through the VMS layers of the Bing Maps or the Microsoft Max, uh, coming from the year 2019. Acquiring historical topograph sources in the Iraqi region to get some um, topographic maps um, as a base layer for our project is a complex process and it's really not easy to access any, of, uh, ki any kind of topographic uh, layers, especially in the context of a sensitive period such as an Anfal genocide. The US Army maps printed in 1943 were selected as the primary cartographic source. It reflects the landscape before the genocide in 70s and 80s followed by the American maps published in 2003, but they are based on the situation coming from the 1994. That means just straight, uh, just after, a couple years after the al anfal genocide. The methodology of the project, um, it consists from several phases. Um, during this paper, I will shortly introduce you only the phase of the archaeological research or the archaeological part. The first step of the analysis was the spatial identification of the villages demolished in the 1970s and 80s. The locating the villages is itself a very challenging and lengthy process. Official list of villages attacked in Al Anfal and during earlier attacks have not been published or declassified or accessible. Uh, and disappeared villages cannot be located automatically. Um, using available maps and historical sources like the hexagon missions, the area of three macro regions uh, was manually analyzed and all recently abandoned settlement was um, well located or was located. The next step was the exploratory and confirmatory data analysis. The timeline data analysis was based on the primary creation of descriptive systems of um, three periods under study. Again, the period before the first attack in 70s, the period be between, because there was a phase of resettlement, originally abandoned villages, and the phase after the second wave of destruction, that means after the year 1988. The main focus of the descriptive system was on the typology on the village core, uh, the analysis of the metric parameters of the built up areas and the individual houses. This level of documentation serves primarily as a preparation for future field research. The field research, uh, we are doing in a form of um, field survey and terrestrial mapping of the discovered remains. The research is fully non-destructive and uses common digital equipment like UAV, terrestrial photogrammetry, terrestrial laser scanning and so on. The results will be processed to produce 3D models and of course the orthophoto plans, which could be used in the future for in-situ documentation 
um, of the current state of the villages, because these villages, these remains, um, are in very endangered situation because they disappear very quickly due to the weather condition or even the locals they are kick uh, the built materials for the new built houses. Um, archaeological material processing is a necessary part of our work. Of course, these artifacts look like more rubbish than um, historical material culture, but these um, objects or features represent an important part of Kurdish history and it's necessary to accept them as a real archaeological collections. The biggest problems, problem, of course, is to create a proper typological and chronological overview. In addition to ceramic sources, we need to focus on selected types of artifacts, such as cartridges or ballets, um, because we can do the typological and chronological classification, porcelain, glass relics, and of course, organic materials that are commonly found in the areas of feminine villages. The map reconstruction is uh, one of the main outputs of the project. Uh, it's a production of a series of maps showing the spatial development of the villages in time sections before and after, again, the period of the 1970s and 1980s. So this is one of the main products, the reconstruction of the landscape, how the landscape was changing, um, reflected the violent resettlement of the original inhabitants. Um, the last part for now is the detailed intrasite analysis of village settlements and monitoring of change in the development of the village core. Um, we are checking the development at the level of highly detailed analysis. For these purposes, a key phase of the project is the production and use the, 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 the DM. Uh, sorry, just, uh, yeah is the production of the DEM, which is not very easy to access or to get for uh, the area like Iraq. The only possible DEM which is freely available in a best resolution is the 12.5 meter resolution, Alospalsal DEM, which is for the detailed intrasite analysis of the village score unsuitable. That's why we decided to create uh, to start to dealing with the creation of the DEM coming from the stereo parts of the hexagon, as it was mentioned in previous paper. And right now we have some already results. Um, uh, the problem is that um, we have to find the most suitable stereo bar that captures our area in the select of the selected villages, ideally in the ideal position of the center of the image. Um, to, that means the most vertical position to reduce panoramic distortion caused by the oblique view. Um, this phase is one of the main priorities of the project for now. Just to be clear how the satellite imagery plays a crucial role, let's move to the case study uh, representing the village of Shusha, located in Smakul region. Its historical development during the 1970s and 80s was very dynamic. There were two phases of MNMN and, again, resettlement of the village. The village core shows very good condition of the buildings on the oldest image we got, which was suitable to, to analyze. That means the year 1972. Is, there is evident um, the village is now abandoned, dismantled or destroyed. Uh, and the first turning point in the modern history of the village again, mappable using remote sensing data, is the year 1974-1975. Uh, this particular village is a typical example of visible abandonment in the context of the historical events of the critical years, which led to the subsequent Kurdish genocide. According to historical satellite imagery, the red population of the village of Shusha can be placed in the period before the, another big wave of Anfal in 1988. The analysis of the 1982 image confirms the partial reconstruction of most of the original homesteads, but the number of visible dwelling drops to 38 from originally 78 households. The reconstruction of the village indicates the return of some of the inhabitants who were forced to leave their home during the first wave of Arabization campaigns. To cover the immediate view of the village um, after or after the main wave of destruction, that means the year 1988, is unfortunately impossible. 
the hexagon missions for our area ends in 1982 and ordinary it, uh, it ends in 1986. So that means just two years before the crucial and uh, most important year. Therefore, we have to we have a gap in the satellite imagery until the modern images. The analysis of modern imagery shows that the village had to be again partially resettled after the biggest wave of attack in 1988. Analysis of the 2019 image reveals the presence of 10 buildings in the core of the village with identical layouts to the original buildings, suggesting, suggesting that the village has been preserved in its original location but only on a significant reduced scale. As in the case of many other villages, analysis in the area of interest, um, the new settlement pattern could be observed here as well. A completely new village has been established very close to the original location of the village core. However, the arrangement of the houses differs significantly from the original layout. The houses' plots are much more bigger, they are built in open space and the original style of cumulative settlement in the, is on the contrary strongly modified in the form of dispersed settlement pattern. The study of modern village settlement offers a really unique opportunity to broaden the interpretive basis for the study of landscape development in Iraq. Through the remote sensing data sets and multidisciplinary research on nucleated villages, we hope to reconstruct not only the original landscape and the structure of the uh, villages itself, but also the social context, the economic returns, property and legal relations to this very fragile and highly endangered built environment. Research into the archaeology of modernity, so that means the events of the 20th century, allows us to link reconstructive models of the historical landscape, the settlement style, the analysis of the built environment, and all of this to historical events, to concrete historical events, to specific families, to their stories. Oh, this is very important. They are still living witnesses of the events from the 70s and 90s. So um, maybe the biggest part of our project will be focused on the oral anthropology or the oral history project because it has to be all our predictions needs to be verified somehow the oral history makes sense for us in this case most of course going by hand by hand with the textual sources but for the unfold period they are quite unable to access as they are forbidden to go through them um, in order to preserve this historical heritage for future generation, we first need to document it and create a basis for the concept of its possible conservation for the future generation of scientists and for public. Thank you. <laughs>